we enter into agreements over the phone. The phone company rings up and says, hello, Mr Cutler, yes. You want to renew your uh, mobile telephone contract with us? Yes. Okay, I'll take it over the phone. I'm going to record this conversation. It becomes a verbal contract. Five minutes later, you have a new contract, you're happy, no papers signed, and you go about and you use your phone. You pay your bills. If you don't pay your bills, does, does the phone company still allow you to use your mobile phone? Why do we treat God any differently? We make a vow, we make a pledge to God. It can be daily. For those that have been baptised either in this church or in another faith, there are vows that you make to God at baptism. I'm not going to go through those vows, but you make vows, you pledge something, whether it be your life, your time, these issues, tithing, whatever it is, and then after baptism, it's like, okay, I walk away. That really means nothing now. In Acts 5 and verses 1 to 11, we read of a story of Ananias and, and uh, Sapphira and is one that many know. Before I read this, if you feel that I'm talking about money, it's not me that is actually impre impressing that upon your mind. And I'm going to cover that issue a bit later. But if you feel it's all about money, it's not about money. When we vow something to God, tithe is an issue. It is an issue in regards to money. But we vow so many other things, our time, our labour to God. To me, uh, not only is the treasure within this church, and I've, and I've mentioned it here before, to me stewardship is not all about money. Stewardship actually comes down to time, even the amount of time that we, we vow to God, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an hour a day to pray, or I'm going to communicate with you every morning for an hour, and we don't keep that vow. We are making vows every day. How often do we keep them? But in this story, in Acts 5 and verses 1 to 11, it says, But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession, and he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. You may think at this time, well, really, what did he agree to? He agreed that all the funds, him and his wife agreed that all the funds would go to the church at that particular time. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young men arose and wrapped him up, carried him out and buried him. Now it was about three hours later when his wife came in not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, Yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet, and breathed her last, and the young men came in and found her dead, and carrying her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all 
who heard these things. I am so grateful to God that we don't have Peter in here today. Amen. For myself. Because if he asked me a question and if I gave an answer, they would have to carry me out. So many times have I robbed God of what I have vowed and promised to him. In Jonah, chapter 2 and verse 9, Jonah 2 verse 9, But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. So when I, I really had to learn something. When I give to God, I give freely. When I give to God, I thank him for all that he has given me. Because really... He gave me something which was so precious that I still can't fully understand what transpired at the cross. Why the creator of this universe would vow to send his son to save me, to save you. And he did it. In Malachi chapter 3 and verse 8, Malachi 3 verse 8 says, Will a man rob God, yet you have robbed me? But you say, In what way have I robbed you? In tithes and in offerings. In Proverbs 11 and verse 24, Proverbs 11 verse 24, There is one who scatters yet increases more and there is one who withholds more than is right but it leads to poverty I think the children's story here covered it this morning God is working I knew nothing about this children's story this morning but it shows you how God inspires other people in order to get a message across even to little ones on a day when I'm talking about vows. Somebody gave a lot expecting great adulation from those that saw what was going on. Somebody who had very little or all that they had brought it to the feet of, of Jesus and offered it. We never really test God or we're afraid to put our faith in God. Lord, if you help me this week, Lord, I'll give you whatever you require to get your word out there. And come Sabbath, how the Lord helped us through a week and we forget to repay what he's done for us. And once again, I'm not talking of the monetary. It can be just in the time. Lord, I'll make it to church. I'm going to be there, Lord. But you never get here. Or you walk in late. If somebody said, look, I'm offering you a chance to meet the Queen of England. She will be at the, the Jones Sutherland Centre at one o'clock. She's only there for an hour. You have an invitation to come. Who 